Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today we'll be testing out Gran Turismo 7 with both the PS5 DualSense controller and the Fanatec Gran Turismo DD Pro Racing Wheel. We'll test out doing some racing with each device and see how well they perform together with the level of immersion they provide to help you decide if it's actually worth upgrading to a wheel or not. I'll include links in the description below of all the items I'll be showing today. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, I hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. Let's first take a look at the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. And this is one of the most advanced PlayStation controllers Sony has ever released with its haptic feedback, adaptive triggers and a built-in microphone. Starting up Gran Turismo 7, you have three different steering controls available. So left stick, directional buttons and motion sensor function. On the control my personal preference is the left stick as I feel it gives more accuracy when steering a car. Directional buttons work well too but motion sensor is crazy in my opinion and doesn't feel as accurate. And then there's three different options for pedal controls so R2, L2 buttons, the X and square buttons and finally right stick. R2, L2 are my preferred option as it makes use of the adaptive triggers so you feel some tension when pressing either the accelerator or brake. The X and square is a reasonable option too but unlike the adaptive triggers there's no feedback on them. Then there's the right stick. This is not really practical because when you're accelerating you'll want to tap the brake at times while accelerating and it just isn't possible with this. So for me the best settings are the left stick with the R2, L2 buttons and this gives the best experience in the game with the controller and with the adaptive triggers it feels awesome. Now if you're a casual gamer jumping between different types of games like first person shooters or role playing games as well as racing games then a controller is more than sufficient to game with. But if you wanted a more immersive experience when racing there's a number of options available at different price points from under $100 or £100 with the cheapest option being the Logitech G29 and the Logitech G923. And these use gears and cogs to provide force feedback, but can feel a bit jerky together with being noisy. Torque levels are good on here for a budget wheel. So a great option, particularly for kids. And generally it comes in at around $400. At the mid range price level, you have the Thrustmaster wheels, which work via a belt driven system. Feedback is far more superior than Logitech's wheels and also doesn't have the jerky feel as it's belt driven to replicate force feedback feedback to the wheel and it works pretty well. These generally come in at around the $600 range and at the top end of that price range you have Fanatec's offering which is the Gran Turismo DD Pro. It's compatible with both the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 PC and is also Xbox ready. So this is a direct drive wheelbase meaning the wheel is mounted directly onto the motor and all force feedback details pass directly onto the wheel giving the best racing experience compared to a belt or gear driven system. Prices start from around $700 and this is the best alternative to consider if your budget can cover it. Now as a comparison to the controller it takes your whole racing experience to another level. The controller is good but doesn't come close in terms of immersion if you compare it to a wheel where you have the controls that you'd have on a car so the pedals, wheels, and paddle shifts. There's even additional accessories you can get like a shifter and handbrake. And now racing on both a controller and Fanatex Gran Turismo DD Pro wheel side by side. My TV is an LG OLED C1 and I've got the wheel set up on my sim cockpit from Track Racer which is a TR120. I'm going to be racing with the same car on the same track so you can see a side by side comparison. So let's race. Racing with the controller is pretty good. I like the feel of the adaptive triggers as it feels great having some tension on there rather than getting no sensation when you press them. But obviously not everyone would be keen on that and it can be turned off. All the controls are available and you can even change gears when driving in manual. It feels pretty smooth when driving with the controller. And as you can see, when I'm going from full left turn to full right turn, the steering doesn't just jump straight across immediately, which is really cool. The haptic feedback works well compared to a previous generation of controllers giving feedback when you go over different surfaces and you get feedback on the bumps on the track or even when you knock into anything. It's amazing how much it actually does translate for just the controller. So really good. I'm impressed. And in terms of immersion, I think it does a great job. Now moving on to the wheel and it feels just incredible in terms of immersion and performance. You get an excellent amount of force feedback and as it's a direct drive wheelbase, it's very accurate. 
you can feel any knocks or bumps coming through to the wheel there's a good amount of force when going around corners the motor's pretty quiet in comparison to a belt or gear driven system and even though you do get haptic feedback from the controller it's nothing in comparison to a wheel it does feel a lot smoother using the wheel and it feels as though i'm driving a lot faster with the wheel than i am with a controller together with having a higher level of control on the car the wheel has four five-way directional sticks which can be pretty useful allowing you to make quick adjustments to the settings on the car whereas on the controller you have to cycle through the different options which isn't as quick the wheel also has paddle shifts which are more convenient than shifting on a controller with the wheel you have a number of feedback settings that you can adjust quite easily without going into any settings in the game now gaming on both the controller and the wheel gives a good amount of immersion but there really is no comparison the wheel is a hundred times better in both racing and immersive experience but is it worth it i'd say yes but only if you're a fan of racing games and can afford it because in reality it's not cheap and if you're just racing a couple of times a month it may not really be worth it in the long run as you know what it will just end up gathering dust in the corner of your room so you've come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing a racing wheel. Details for all the products I've mentioned today are in the description below, including purchasing links. And if you're still here, drop me a racing wheel in the comments as it's nice to see who got to the end of my videos. And if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to be notified of my next release. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.